The boom AC has a ball and socket joint at A and two cables holding up an 80 pound crate. We want to find out what the reactions are at A and what the tensions are in the cables. Notice that this one cable goes from B up to D and then back down to C through a frictionless pulley so that we know that we're going to have the, whatever tension I have in one cable equaling the tension in the other. Step one, draw a free body diagram. At A, I've got a ball and socket joint. So here at A, I've got a force up that looks like AZ, a force along the x-axis, AX, and a force along the y-axis, AY. I'm not going to have any moments at a ball and socket joint. I'm also going to have the tensions in the two cables. This is what I'm going to call TBD. It goes from B to D. That's the tension in the first cable. I'm going to have a tension in the cable that goes from C to E, which I'm going to call TCE. And I'm going to have a tension in the cable TCD, which goes from C to D. I also am going to need my distances, so I'm going to call this 4 feet. And this is 8 feet out to the end of the rod. And I've got, don't forget, the weight of the cable holding up the box. So that's my free body diagram. It's not complete until I actually tell you where those points are. So A is at the origin, B is at 0, 4, 0 in feet, C is at 0, 12, 0, D is negative 3, 0, 4, and E is at 3, 0, 6. Again, make sure that you know how to get those from an engineering drawing. Step 2, list your forces in Cartesian form. The easiest one to do is the weight at the end of the beam, which is in the negative K direction, given the axis system that we're given over here. The next easiest one is A. A is going to be some X value and a Y value and a J, uh, C value. So I've got AXI plus AYJ plus AZK. The three tensions in the rope are given using two points that connect them. That's when you've got a magnitude along a line and you're going to use the position vector, unit vector, multiply technique. So the position vector from B to D is to take the point D over here and subtract out the point B. That gives me minus 3i minus 4j plus 4k. That's a position vector. I need to divide by its magnitude, 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 4 squared, and multiply by the magnitude of my vector, which is going to be just the tension in that rope. From C to E, I take C and subtract, uh, for, I take E and subtract out C. 2 minus from gives me 3i minus 12j plus 6k. Again, divide by the magnitude of the vector, 3 squared plus 12 squared plus 6 squared, and multiply by its magnitude. TCD is from C to D. 2 minus from is the D component minus the B component. So I have minus 3i minus 12j plus 4k. Divide by its magnitude, 3 squared plus 12 squared plus 6 squared, and multiply by, its ma by the magnitude you want to have for the tension of the cable. Stop at this point. Does it make sense that the BD and the CD parts are going to be pulling in the negative x direction? Yes. Does it make sense that all three of the cables are pulling straight up? Yes. We want the K component to be positive. I'm going to go ahead and write down for you what these would be in their... Um, multiplied out form, and we want to make sure that we remember that the tension in BD is going to be the tension in CD. We're just going to keep it the way it is for the moment so that we can uh, keep everything straight. Write the sum of the forces. Don't forget your AX, AY, and AZ. Those are forces that actually exist because of the reaction at A. After that, you're going to add the I components of each of your tensions and add the J components of each of your tensions. Remembering to keep five significant digits as you go through. You can round to three significant digits, but not until you get to the very end of the problem, please. Otherwise, you've introduced too much error into your calculations. And again, don't forget your 80 pounds. That's a perfectly reasonable and important force here. The next thing you have to do is the sum of your moments. First thing in the sum of the moments is to figure out where you're going to take the sum of the moments about. I'm going to pick A, because if I take the moments about point A, I've eliminated three of my unknowns. I don't have any distances. I mean, the only distance I have here is along the y-axis. That means I don't have any distances in X or Z. Therefore, there are no moments at M1, the moments about the y-axis. The only moment you could have at the y-axis would be a applied moment or a reaction moment in the y-direction, but I don't have any of those. So I have 
the sum of the moments at y is equal to 0. Again, that's because there are no distances in my figure in either x or z. You need to have a distance in x with a force in z, or a distance in z with a force in x to be able to get a moment about the y-axis. Now, same thing with the moments about the x-axis. Now I have forces in k and distances in y like my 80 pounds at 12 feet. That gives me a spinning about the x-axis. Now I have this in the negative direction because if you thought about how that weight of the crate would spin, your thumb would be pointing in the negative x direction. Or in our picture up here, it's sort of going this way, but remember those curly cues don't mean much in two dimensions. This is in the negative x direction. In each, for each of the others, I have also a distance in y and a force in z. So the first tension only has a four-foot distance, but the others, TCE and the TCD, have dis forces in K. These are the K components and distances in the Y direction. I'm going to add those up carefully. This is in the, the 80 times 12 is in the negative X direction. Each of these are in the positive X direction. How do I know that? Well, spin your hand so that your fingers go out the y-axis and then in the direction of the component. So out y and up z means your thumb is pointing in the positive x direction. So if I've made this first term negative, then each of these has to be positive. I'm going to set that equal to zero. To get a moment about the z-axis, I need a distance in y. Again, that's going to be my 4, 12, and 12. And components of these forces, this is a distance in y, so I need a component in x. So I've got 0.4652852 TBD, and then I've got 0.21822 TCE, and 0.23077 TCD. Those are the x components. These are going to equal zero, but you have to make sure you're either adding or subtracting them correctly. The component in the x direction for TBD, this first term, is going to tend to spin your, your thing here with your thumb pointing up. So your hand goes, your fingers go out the y-axis and then in the negative x direction for some of them or in the positive x direction for some of them. For the BD part, your x component goes in the negative x direction, which means your thumb is going to be in the positive z. So that's a positive number. For the TCE and the part, my thumb is actually going to be pointing down. My fingers go out Y, and then in the positive X direction means my thumb is going to be pointing down. That gives me a different sign. The TCD, again, is, has a force component that's in the negative X direction. So as your fingers go out the Y axis and in the negative X direction, this gives you a positive Z moment. So. Those are my two equations for my moments. Um, at this point, I'm going to make use of the fact that that goes through the tent, through a frictionless cable, and I'm going to set TBD equal to TCD so I can solve. What I now have, com using the pulley and the five equations of motion that aren't 0 equals 0, gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equations and 5 unknowns, or 6 equations and 6 unknowns, depending on how you want to count this one. Setting TBD to TCD in the sum of the moments in Z, just the one that we just did, gives me 4.64332 TBD, if I multiply that out. And the others are equal to each other, so I can say this is 2.61861 TCE. This the first term here combines the TBD part and the TCD part, and I've moved the TCE part over to the right-hand side of the equation so I can solve. TBD is equal to 0.56395 TCE which is, by the way, also the same thing as TCD. Now I want to plug both of these into the sum of the moments in Y and X. The sum of the moments in X gives me minus 960 plus 1.40920 TCE. All I'm doing is substituting and multiplying it out. 5.23723 TCE and 2.08229 TCE. That has to equal zero. TCE then is, this is one equation and one unknown, TCE is 109.98, which I can substitute back in. I get TBD, which is the same thing as TCD, is 0.5 times that, or 62.024. Now I'm going to plug these into the sum of the forces to solve for AX, AY, and AZ. And at the end of the day, I have to answer the question. The tension in the cable 
for BC, DC is 62.0 pounds. Um, this is the point at which I'm rounding the three sig figs, not before this. The tension in the second cable is 110 pounds, and my reaction at A is 19.4I plus 192J minus 25.8K pounds. Notice that I am, at this point, not relying on a sign that I chose in my free body diagram. I've just given this in terms of the axes that were given in the problem.